Dear friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll try to demonstrate how I managed to rescue a potential Rexis runoff and prevent some dire complications in a grade 4 nuclear sclerosis. So, after I have stained my anterior capsule with 0.06% trypan blue, I move ahead to make the main incision. My preferred choice for the main incision is a triplanar 2.8mm main incision and I usually make the incision on the steeper axis. So I initiate the capsular axis with the utrotor forceps and raise the capsular flap and then I bring it around in a continuous curvilinear fashion and I always try to grasp uh, the capsular flap as close to the tearing edge as possible especially in a grade 4 or a grade 5 nucleus where uh, the lens is quite swollen up. So, so far I've completed about three-fourths of the capsular axis and I'm pretty confident now I'm getting a circular capsular axis and boom! I've had a radial extension of the capsular axis mark. Let's see that again in slow motion. So you can see that the mistake that I made was that I grasped the capsular flap quite far away from the tearing edge and I lost control. So in my confidence that I had nearly completed my capsular axis, I kind of grasped it in the wrong manner. So the trick of uh, bringing it back into a continuous curvilinear capsular axis is to grasp the flap that is run off and to apply force in the opposite direction. Let's see that again. So I'm now grasping the capsular flap and as soon as I get hold of the capsular flap, the force, the direction of the force I apply will be towards the main incision, like this. And as you can see, the flap turned around and came back and joined the edge of the remaining capsule. So now that I've, I've ensured that I have a continuous capsular axis, I move ahead with the hydro dissection and try to free the cortical capsular adhesions. And now we proceed with the phaco emulsification. My preferred uh, technique in a grade 4 to grade 5 nucleus is a direct chop. And so, as you can see, I have impaled my phaco tip into the nucleus and I'm using my chopper to achieve the direct chop. And with minor rotatory movements, I try to chop each hemi-nucleus into at least three pieces in a similar manner. At this point, the vacuum that I use is about 400 millimeters of mercury and it is a fixed vacuum. I mean, it doesn't, the rise time is very fast. And when I move to the quadrant removal part of the phaco emulsification, I keep it linear as in the rise time of the phaco emulsification will respond directly to the amount of pedal excursion that I do in foot pedal position 3. As you can see now that I have been successful in breaking the nucleus into six small pieces and I remove my chopper from the anterior chamber and I insert a blunt second instrument, a Y nucleus manipulator. Uh, I prefer not to keep any sharp instrument in the anterior chamber once my chopping is complete because I don't want to inadvertently hit the capsular excess margin or puncture the posterior capsule. So now we carry on with the routine phaco emulsification of all the nuclear fragments. As you can see I always keep my PC protected by keeping my second instrument behind the pieces that I am emulsifying. This step is especially important when you are emulsifying the last fragment and some surgeons who don't have high-end machines that have very good fluidics, this small preventive measure can prevent surge induced trampolining of the posterior capsule. 
So always keep your second instrument, the blunt instrument, behind the last piece and when you are emulsifying the last nuclear fragment in a phaco emulsification surgery. Once the phaco emulsification is complete, we go ahead and remove all the cortical matter with irrigation and aspiration. And as you can see from the configuration of the anterior capsular rexus margin, it looks like a snowman. So you can call this a snowman rexus. My preferred technique for IO implantation is a hydro implantation, wherein the need for viscoelastic uh, injection in the anterior chamber is non-essential and you can reduce one potential source of a toxic anterior segment syndrome. So once the intraocular lens is in the bag, I adjust the position so as the optic covers the maximum portion of uh, the uh, capsular axis margin. And with this we conclude the case. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions regarding this case, I'll be happy to take them in the comments section below. Take care. Bye-bye.